Mark Gurman has dropped a massive report about Apple's entire upcoming Mac lineup for 2021. And this report covers everything from GPU upgrades to display sizes to performance, release dates, and a ton more new details. So get us next ready, and here's everything you need to know. Starting off with the MacBook Pro updates, Mark Gurman reports that the next-gen MacBook Pros will be released in the summer. Now, that's a massive news because we never had an exact release date for these MacBook Pros. They were rumored to come out at some point uh, by the end of 2021, to which I predicted either June at WWDC or in November at a special Mac event. But now it seems that we might actually get them at WWDC, which is really, really awesome because it means that we are less than a month away until we get to see the next generation of MacBook Pros. Speaking of these next-gen MacBook Pros, you probably know that the main changes will be a flat design, which would resemble the iPad Pro and the iPhone 12 line, a larger 14-inch display on the 13-inch model, alongside Mini LED technology for a brighter panel with better contrast, and a more powerful M1X slash M2 chip alongside more ports. Ports which have been reported before by Mark Herman and Ming-Chi Kuo, and according to them, MagSafe would be coming back alongside a dedicated HDMI port and an SD card reader. In this new report, Mark Herman once again confirms the chassis redesign alongside the ports that we heard about before, and he also gave us the code names for these machines, J314 for the 14-inch MacBook Pro and J316 for the 16-inch model. But on top of this, he also gave us details on actual performance improvements that these machines will get. Mark says that the main focus of the new M1X slash M2 chip would be the graphics or then the CPU performance, and that's exactly what I was hoping for, as literally the only complaint that I had about the M1 Max was that whilst the GPU power was better than on other Intel and AMD chips with integrated graphics, they would still not compete with dedicated GPUs. Well, that's about to change because according to Mark Gurman, Apple's second gen silicon would offer 16 and 32 core GPU options. The M1 only comes in an 8 core GPU configuration. If you're wondering about the 7 core MacBook Air, that's just a lower quality bin version of the M1, so it's still the same design, just manufacturing defect, essentially. I explained this in previous videos, but um, anyway, what this means is that uh, if there are no other improvements other than just the core count increase, the M1X would offer up to four times the GPU performance of the M1, which is nuts. And the fact that Apple will give us the ability to choose between two different GPU options shows us that Apple isn't planning on giving up on choices for Pro users anytime soon. But wait, there is more. Mark Gurman also reported that on top of these massive GPU upgrades, the M1X will also feature some CPU upgrades of its own, with 10 cores up from 8. And the way they would work is also a bit different now. With the M1, 4 out of those 8 cores were high performance cores, while 4 were low performance ones, which meant that unless you were doing something really demanding, only the low performance cores would be used and you would get a far better battery life. With the M1X, we would apparently get eight high performance cores and two low performance cores. What this means is that when the system is under full load, it could in theory perform up to twice as fast. But it also means that when it's not under full load and it is just using those two low performance cores, it would be twice as slow as the M1, which has four low performance cores. Of course, that Apple has very likely improved the overall performance of those two cores, so I honestly don't see them being a noticeable downgrade over the M1 chip. But wait, there is even more. Mark Gurman says that unlike the M1, which supports up to 16 gigabytes of RAM slash unified memory, this new M1X chip would support up to 64 gigabytes. Yes, we are finally getting more RAM options, and it would also support more Thunderbolt ports, which makes me think that that single external display limitation of the M1 would also be fixed with the M1X. Oh man, this is so exciting, best news yet, but of course, there is one downside. Digitimes reported earlier this week that the mini LED panels for these new MacBook Pros have actually been pushed into 2022. Personally, I would still be extremely happy with just the redesign and the performance improvements, of course, that if we also get the mini LED display, I would be even happier, but I don't see this being an issue if it does get pushed until 2022 when, you know, the second 
model of this redesigned MacBook Pros comes out. And to be honest, considering the supply constraints that Apple already has with a 12.9 inch iPad Pro with the mini LED display, I do believe those constraints to also translate to these new MacBook Pros. So that means that if Apple does not include a mini LED display, uh, they would be more available and you would actually be able to get your hands on one, which is you know, what everyone wants in the end. Now, one final thing that I wanna mention here is that I do actually believe that the only difference between the 14-inch MacBook Pro and the 16-inch MacBook Pro is going to be the display size. Now, this is my theory, and I know it sounds crazy, but it actually makes sense, as the 14-inch and the 16-inch models would both run on the same M1X chip, so there wouldn't be any performance differences between the two unless Apple restricts some configuration options when you buy it, such as the 32-core GPU to the 16-inch model. But at least from a technical standpoint, the 14-inch model can have the same specs as the 16 inch. And just like the 11 inch and the 12.9 inch iPad Pros, where both have the same exact M1 chip, I do expect Apple to give us the exact same performance on both models of the MacBook Pros, with the only remaining difference between the two laptops being the display size and possibly a better battery life on the 16 inch model. But yeah, let me know in the comments your thoughts on all of this and um, definitely subscribe while you're at it if you're enjoying this video so far. Okay, now it is time for a special announcement. If you go to this link right here, for a limited time only, you will get 70% off with NordPass as well as an additional month for free. What is NordPass? It is the only password manager you'll ever need. As unlike Apple's Keychain, for example, NordPass works on iOS, Android, Mac, Windows, and even Linux. Not only that, but since NordPass is a full app rather than just a Chrome extension, it integrates perfectly into the OS. Which means that when you want to log into an app, you would instantly get the NordPass pop-up to autofill your password. But NordPass can also store secure notes, credit card info, personal info, and you can even create folders to organize your data in. On top of that, NordPass offers you tools such as password health, alerts for when your passwords have appeared in data breaches, and much more. Use coupon code Zone of Tech or the link below to get 70% off plus an extra month for free. But don't go because we're not done yet, because aside from the MacBook Pros, Mark Gurman also mentioned some new details on some of the other upcoming Macs. With the next one being the MacBook Air. Now, we'll have a way more detailed MacBook Air video with all the new colors and some more details on that soon, so definitely stay tuned for that. Make sure you enable notifications so that you don't miss it. That video will actually be out this week, so very soon. But until then, Mark Gurman claims that this new redesigned MacBook Air will launch later in the year, and it will not have an M1 processor as expected, but the thing is, it would not have an M1X slash M2 either. Instead, Apple will have an in-between chip that would offer the same number of CPU cores as the M1, but clocked higher for improved performance, as well as nine or a 10 core GPU from the current seven to eight core one. Therefore, I actually predict that Apple will call this chip the M1X, and then the one inside the MacBook Pros will be the M2. Which means that while this new M1X chip would not be a match for the M2 that we would get inside the MacBook Pros, it would still be an improved version over the M1. Mark also stated that the low-end 13-inch MacBook Pro will also be updated with its brand new M1X chip later in the year. So it seems that Apple will indeed be keeping that design for longer, which is what I believe to be the case as well. 13-inch MacBook Pro, then the 14-inch redesign, and then also the 16 uh, redesign in this new lineup. Next up we have the Mac Mini, where Mark mentioned that Apple is working on a higher-end version with the same M2 chip as the new MacBook Pros. He did mention that this new Mac Mini would actually replace the Intel Mac Mini that Apple is still selling, as it will have four Thunderbolt ports, as opposed to just the two ones that we have on the M1 Mac Mini at the moment, and it would actually sit above the M1 Mac Mini. This new Mac Mini could be delayed though, as Apple might want to spread out these releases releases across a longer period of time. Okay, next up we have the brand new iMac. Not the 24 inch one, but the bigger brother of it, uh, the 32 inch model. Now, Mark Herman did say that Apple is working on a larger iMac as well. Uh, 32 inches is what we would assume uh, would be the case. Now, he did mention that the development of this new iMac was paused a few months ago for Apple to focus on the redesigned 24 inch model. Now, that's a bit odd because you would assume that Apple would just design them at the same time, right? Unless, of course, they have a different design. And the 32-inch model does indeed lose the chin in favor of a more futuristic design. We don't yet know what processor this new iMac would feature, 
but I would actually expect Apple to have something more powerful than even the M2 inside the upcoming MacBook Pros, as high-end iMacs have always been more powerful than even the highest-end MacBook Pros. And finally, Mark also talked about the Mac Pro. So we heard about a redesigned Mac Pro with Apple Silicon for a while now, with John Prosser even sharing an image back in February, but now we have some more details on the specs. Mark claims that the new Mac Pro will come in 20-core and 40-core CPU options, where the 40-core model would have 32 high-performance cores and 8 low-performance cores. And then the GPU will also be a custom one made by Apple, so no more AMD, and this will have a 64-core option and a 128-core option. These are some massive upgrades over even the M2, which comes with a 10-core CPU and a 32-core GPU, making this new Mac Pro the most powerful computer that Apple has ever made, at least we would assume so. Interesting enough, Mark also stated that this new redesigned Mac Pro will actually look like a smaller version of the 2019 model, which makes me think that we might not get the taller Mac Mini version that John Prosser showed us, but rather a follow-up to, yes, the current Mac Pro, which I'm actually a pretty big fan of in terms of how it looks. So leave a comment down below if you wanna see a separate video on each of these Macs in just more detail and my thoughts on all of these. Uh, our MacBook Air video once again will be live by the end of this week, so definitely subscribe, hit the bell icon, select all notifications so that you don't miss out, and uh, give this video a like if you have enjoyed it so far as it does help out the channel. I'm Daniel, this has been Zenoff Tech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zenoff Tech, signing out. Cheers.